So there folks, welcome to Orion Trail, something a bit different. Uh, I've got a bit of free time, so it's time to go off schedule uh, and check out some one-off games. Um, Orion Trail, if you've played Oregon Trail or Oregon Trail before, you probably know what we're in for. If you haven't, I guess you'll pick it up as we go along. Um, I've been stuck on this third world for a while, this third galaxy, so this is the one we're going to go for. We're going to do a whole run and see how far we get. Um, the game has had some rebalancing recently. The problem was that the early uh, version of the game had a bit of an issue where sometimes if you succeeded, you ended up worse off than if you'd failed, um, or certainly you weren't rewarded. You you know you ended up with a net loss overall, um, and they've they've addressed that issue. So hopefully, hopefully we'll do a little bit better. Space Montezuma's Revenge is the name of the galaxy we're going into. In the late 22nd century, it was proven that ancient aliens pretty much built everything of importance on Earth. Galaxy Force scientists believe that this is where the aliens originate from. Engage. So we're going to pick a crew. We're going to pick a crew of four um, who are our officers, starting with the captain here. We've got these things up here. We've got crew, food, fuel, and hull, which are the resources we're going to be managing. And our guys have these various statistics. Um, our idea is going to be to try and push one of these statistics up quite high whilst keeping a reasonable, reason, a reasonable amount in the others so that we're not like, you know, just a single glass cannon sort of deal. Uh, it does mean we're going to go with the captain with a three in something, uh, which is going to be this guy who has two strength, three science. Um, Anna barely ache. Bellyache, wow. Don't be fooled by her rosy demeanour. Captain Bellyache is a ferocious force who never accepts defeat. A skilled engineer, she's been known to push her tech team aside to fix the ship herself. Okay, you're in. Bear Captain. Oh my god, beautiful. Uh, first officer. So, wow. That would be quite good, uh, but it is going to give us the problem I said of like not spreading our stats out enough, so we're going to go for Loretta Fife instead. But... That, you can try and like max out one stat, but if that stat doesn't come up in the options when you're trying to do something, you are totally boned. Um, so let's take Loretta Fife with us. She still gives us two in science. A cunning and quick-witted logistics officer with a no-nonsense attitude. Lieutenant Fife is a ringer at trivia at night with a profound knowledge of hollow films. Okay, Loretta, you're in. Chief Engineer... Got a couple of options here. Uh, guess it doesn't matter which one we go for. It's hard to say without knowing who's going to come up next. Would we rather go Tactics or Bravado? Tactics is generally a little bit more useful. So let's go for Dennis Class. A seasoned Classman scientist who prefers the quiet of the lab over the bustle of the bridge. Dr. Class has a record of being stubborn and gruff towards the lesser minds that he serves with. Okay, we're taking you with us. Seven science, that's pretty fat. Um... See, that looks like a good option, but we can probably ignore signs temporarily um, because we've got seven. That's pretty damn good. Uh, the extra point is minimal at this stage. I think we would rather push one of these stats up. So our choices are, if we take this guy, we'd get four and one, or this one would give us three and three. I feel like three and three um, is a better thing. So Cheryl Platts is coming with us. Lieutenant Platts is a brilliant tactician who knows when to pull the trigger and when to just put down the electro-eradication cannon. She's poised to one day serve as captain. Welcome aboard. There's the goal. It's a long way away. We've got to start all the way back here. For some reason, this galaxy, the first place you stop at is this Peskin outpost, um, which you don't really need to go to. You can see we're using fuel and food as we travel. Um, we don't need to go to this outpost. We're just going to keep moving. It's a place where you can buy things, but we don't really need to buy anything because we've just started. Um, where do we want to go? They're both food-based things, so I guess we'll go here because this gives us the most options of where to spread to next. Oh, something's happened. Did you hear that? Something totally just bonked the side of your ship. What was that? Oh, man, that sucks. Tough break. Minus one hull. Damn it. It happens sometimes. Can't be helped. The air controlling the ship's food replicator has decided it's graduated from common food and is only willing to produce tiny portions of a space gourmet meal from now on. But it's burger night and the crew really just wants their burgers. So here we go. We've got a few options to take. And obviously science is our guaranteed win pretty much. So we're going to go with it. Um, 
science, but possible loss of fuel. You don't think that it's typical for a chef AI to suddenly develop its own desires and revolt. That sort of behaviour has historically been restricted to weapon systems. Intrigued, you set your science team on isolating and studying the AI. We've got a plus seven bonus, which is pretty nice. It means we're almost guaranteed to win. And we did win, thank God. Oh my God, all the way down there. If we'd have had a couple of points less, we'd have been boned. Your research has managed to isolate the cause. It's a rerouting of the neural nano digital science science things. You're only kind of paying attention to their explanation. They use this discovery to boost the AI's efficiency. So see, the problem here is before the rebalancing, we would have gained 30 food, but lost like some fuel, probably 50, uh, which is just ridiculous when you're trying to like win. Um, so it's nice to see they've rebalanced that. We gained 30 food, no negatives, because we succeeded. We shouldn't be punished for succeeding. Uh, where do we want to go next? We have the pink nebula with a random reward, orange nebula with a random reward, and pink nebula with some crew. Let's go for... Do we want the extra crew? Yeah, why not? Let's fucking do it. Let's see if we can get some extra crew. Sensors indicate there is some sort of floating memorial. No, we're not... Oh, they have rebalances, though. Maybe we'll check it out. Okay. Some sort of floating memorial nearby you. Navigate Rassi if you want to make the short detour to check it out. So, <laughs> before the patch, this was almost always a bad thing. It wasn't worth going for, because nearly every time you visit one of these things, you lost a stat. Uh, they're supposed to rebalance that, so let's take the risk. Dr. Speedy, live long and prosper. Not your dead. <laughs> some of these are random, and some of them are from your, from your previous playthroughs, uh, I have noticed. So, if, like, previous crew of mine that have died in this galaxy will have gravestones that we might bump into. Do we get anything? The gravestone was so moving that one of your officers is inspired to give a speech. It was beautiful. We gained one. Our officer over here has gained one diplomacy. Excellent news. <laughs> So the stats are actually spread out among your team. Although we have these bonuses here, um, it is actually spread out. So if we lose an officer, like if we were to lose her now, we would lose that one diplomacy that she gained, whereas if we lost this person, we wouldn't. Um, so it does remember who's got the stats. Deciding that your crew could use a night of fun, you go. You walk about to the famed Galaxy Club. To your horror, you learn that it's karaoke night. A burly, one-eyed hippoclop from Nervous 4 challenges you to a karaoke sing-off. Your crew eggs you on. Bravado, we have none. Uh, pretty bad. Pretty bad indeed. So, uh, we, we're not going to win this for a start. In fact, we're going to have a pretty hard time of it. So, we've got potential game... Because we're definitely going to lose something, I think. So, we're either going to lose something random, something random, or crew. And to be honest, we can afford to lose crew at this place. And we're like heavy metal, don't we, guys? So, let's go heavy metal. You, sw you swig a shot of something called Braxian Crude, shake it off and go for it. You make sure to gyrate just like the lead singer of the actual Spacey DDC... Oh, I see. Just like the lead singer of the actual Spacey DC would. Wow. Brilliant. Okay. Just like <laughs> Brian Johnson, I guess. That's his name, isn't it? Brian Johnson? Oh my god, we passed! Holy shit! That one big scream note at the end, you nail it. But all the windows in the place shatter and one of your crew is killed by flying glass. Rock and roll. We lost one crew. That's not a big loss, really. Gained one bravado for the captain. Excellent. That's a good trade. That's a damn good trade. Uh, okay. Let's move on. Is there only one place we can go to? Class P star. Okay. We'll go there, then. Your science chief has had a breakthrough, a cap that can turn the wearer's mental energy into starship fuel. The demonstration worked, but no one knows how to use it. Gained 150 fuel, lost one science. Bit of a pain, but 150 fuel is nice. That will be very useful to us. So, there you go. Fireflies in the garden. Suddenly the ship finds itself, finds itself in a golden haze. What initially appears to be a solar flare is actually a swarm of millions of fireflies. This is remarkable because whoever heard of a fire finds a fire... That's quite a hard word to say. A firefly in space. Ah, oh, I see. I get it. Your crew discusses what to do. It's full of these little references, man. And some of them... I, that wasn't particularly subtle. I just didn't clock straight away. But some of them are quite subtle. So watch out for them. If you see a reference that I missed, tell me in the comments because they're brilliant. Uh, what are our options? Blast your way out, risks hull for an unknown reward, and we've got three in that. Ignore them, we don't want to do that. We lose fuel, possibly gain food, we've only got one bravado. Feed them, lose food, 
gain random. Um, hull. Hull is the thing we can afford to risk, really, on a, on a 3 or 3. So we're going to go with blast your way out. Fearful and suspicious of the millions of insects surrounding your ship, you turn the ship's thrusters on in an attempt to incinerate the pests. In case you haven't spotted how this works, every point you have gives you turns of failure into a success. Um, if you have, like, I think eight or nine points in that, basically if you can fill up all these with successes, the critical failure stays, but your most recent victory becomes a critical success. So you can get, like, multiple critical success chances. It's pretty damn cool, actually, and we just passed. Barely. In their death throes, the insects emit trails of rainbow lights like the Aurora Borealis. The whole crew marvels at its sad beauty, then goes about cleaning millions of bug carcasses from the ship's view screen. Plus one science! We got our science point back. Hooray! Not a total loss. Pink Nebula. Possible gain of crew. Let's go there. The machine that goes ping! I know that from something. I can't think what it's from. The machine that goes ping! Oh my god, is it is, is is it from Hitchhikers? It might be from Hitchhikers. It might be from Hitchhikers. Um, you hear a strange ticking coming from the ship. You take it to the nearest repair shop, a real seedy back of the galaxy kind of place. A big lizard mechanic in an overalls. Oh my god, this is such a hard sentence to read. A big lizard mechanic in overalls says it's your warp core, the most expensive part to replace. Our options are... Well, off the bat, our best chance of success are red and blue, and one risks crew, the other one risks random. We can afford to spare some crew, so we're going to go with the red one, strong arm the lizard. And the crew steps forward to teach this reptilian rip-off artist a lesson. Oh, I thought we were going to fail that. Holy shit, we've been quite lucky so far. It doesn't always go this well, and it will start to go bad as we carry on. Holy shit. The lizard, immediately nervous, is sure you can come to an arrangement. He fixes your ship for a fair price. You leave a couple of crew members with him to make sure he doesn't rip off anyone else. Minus two crew, plus three hull. Pretty good trade, actually. Uh, pretty good trade. 22 crew is still plenty, and we can probably pick some up somewhere else. We have a planet over here, which... Uh... Do we want to go for the planet? We've got a definite one coming up there, so I'm, I'm going to give this one a miss. Basically, a planet is an away mission, and you tend to lose quite a lot of crew on them, but gain some pretty good rewards. If we do that one, we wouldn't be able to do one of these, and since though both of these are there, we might as well just go towards both of those. We'll go for this green nebula instead. We're doing to pick up some food soon, so we are starting to run low. Tragically, the lead anchor for your ship's closed-circuit morning news show, Indestructible 2 Day... Uh, our ship is called the Indestructible 2, by the way, which is a joke in and of itself. What happened to the Indestructible 1? Uh, no news is bad news in this case. We've lost one diplomacy from the captain, and we've lost a crew. <laughs> Annoying. The deadly space pirate Planetary... Uh, Planetary has escaped prison. He's seeking vengeance on you and your crew for sending him away those long years ago. Uh, well, we're going to go with science with this one, ba basically, because that's our best chance of success. So we'll ask the science team. You follow the science team's advice and launch an insult, insult bomb to demoralise the pirates into surrendering. Pretty high chance of success here. Watch us fail. <laughs> we got it. Fucking hell. With each vulgar volley, Planetary's chaos slows. Oh, chase, sorry. Planetary's chase slows. Soon his ship changes course towards the nearest ice cream nebula. Uh, ice cream nebula. Is that a, uh, what's that fucking game called? Oh, the one with the two things in that. I can't remember what it's called. But yeah, ice cream. Stories of dissing Terry. Oh, dissing Terry. Stories of dissing Terry spread across the galaxy. Some of your crew think you're a bully, though. Dissing Terry is obviously a play on words for dysentery, which, if you've played Oregon Trail or Oregon Trail, is something you die of a lot. You also die of dysentery in this a lot as well. And you can die from dissing Terry. I've done it before. Gain one bravado. Fantastic. Before we move on, I'm going to click uh, the crew screen. So this, if you remember, we lost a diplomacy from the captain, but we've still got two diplomacy because the captain had zero, so we had nothing to lose there. So that was actually, we didn't lose anything, which is quite cool, because uh, you can't go into negative numbers. This is why it's quite good that it does track the individual statistics for each person, because um, sometimes you can get away with not losing shit. Uh, right, where are we going? We've got an orange nebula, or a class X star. 
Let's go for the guaranteed fuel. I don't like the random rewards as much. I like to know what I'm going for. Your weapon specialist just lost the shipwide Morkel Crombat tournament. They were super crumboed while reciting an elaborate your mama joke. <laughs> we lost one of those. And did she have one of those in the first place? She did, so we have actually lost one. That's bad news. Good job we've got tactics to fall back on, eh, guys? Crisis, the game. Crisis. There's a new game fan involving a visor. This is a Star Trek reference if you haven't picked up on it yet. Everyone seems to be playing and inviting others to play. You could swear you saw something similar on a TV show once. You can't put your finger on it, but something seems off about this situation. Uh, we could go with either option here. Um, risking crew for, f crew for fuel or risking random. I'm actually going to go with risking random uh, because we might risk hull and we've got plenty of hull. Uh, and that's probably better than risking crew, although we might lose f f food. So it's a bit of a gamble, but we'll go for it. Uh, we've got three. Ch we've got a chance of three either way. These are both tactics options. Read the game's reviews on GalaxyNet. You decide to learn more about this fad that's been sweeping your ship. You and two of your bridge officers sequester yourselves in your ready room, scanning GalaxyNet for answers. 50-50 pretty much on this one. Oh, critical success! Holy shit! Wow, this game is legit. You lift the ban and start playing yourself. Soon you assemble a Galaxy Force V-Sports team and start kicking butt all over the universe, attracting new crew members and winning fabulous prizes. Six crew, 200 fuel. Oh my god. Great success. Now, I'm going to go to this place first, which gives us a chance to maybe pick up some more stuff before we hit these two. Uh, let's do that. It means our journey is going to be slightly longer, but much better chance of getting some stuff, I think. You receive an urgent report that several crew are vaporised in the ship's radioactive particle phase room. You make a note to move the ping pong table out of there. Nice. Lost two crew. Oh well, never mind. You begin to find multicolored jelly beans all over the ship. It's as though they appear magically and they appear all over the place. Hundreds of them and they're delicious in all different flavours. Collect and eat them. Improve your science. Involve your science team. Let's go for the random one. Although, no, let's gain some food. Collect and eat them. While this is unusual, you're not sure it's a problem. Who doesn't love jelly beans? They keep showing up, we'll just keep eating them. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Let's collect all the jelly beans. And let's hope we succeed, because we need that food. Don't you dare! Oh, ho, 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 son of a bitch, that scared me. Two lost children cry in the hall. They left a tray of jelly beans to help, find, help them find home, and you've been eating them. Their grateful parents give you all the jelly beans. Several crew go into a diabetic coma, but at least the kids are safe. Wow. Lost two crew, gained 36 food. That's not a lot. We need more food. We're getting low on food. Let's go, let's go for the planet. Although, yeah, let's go for the planet. Let's go to the planet. <laughs> You assemble your entire crew on the assembly deck for your scheduled mission roll call. Several people do not answer. Were they ever even here? Minus two crew. That's annoying. Just as we were going for the planet as well. Oh, God. We're going to lose some crew here as well. Scanners are detecting an eerie nocturnal planet nearby with a single green glowing moon. Apparently, it's chock full of loot and natural resources. This could be a valuable opportunity. Are you going to check it out? Fuck yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So, one of the things we have to do is risk an officer down there. Um, we're going to send Cheryl Platz, who has 2-1-1, which I feel is probably our best spread to go with. Cheryl, you're going on an away mission. She can die on this, we've got to be careful. And here's the crew members we brought with us. Cabensi, I'm guessing these are Kickstarter backers, by the way. Cabensi, Diogo Lopez, Alex Ferran, Gambling Campbell, The Bigger Boat, Xander Ga Oh yeah, we're going to need a Bigger Boat. Xander Catarius, Haka, and Streetlamp Lamousse. Excellent. A hunched figure, as green as the planet's moon, stands patiently before your team. The moon man gestures, gestures for your team to follow him below ground, a smile frozen upon his face. Not so fast, Mr. Green Jeans. You're calling the shots here. Uh, so this is just our standard abort one. Uh, search the surface first, I mean we'll have like an extra event, uh, which we're not going to do because we'll just lose crew. We're going to follow the moon man underground. Okay, fine. You tell Cheryl Platts to follow the Moon Man. He smiles blankly at Cheryl Platts and then leads your squad below ground. Your team descends deep into the planet, following the Moon Man. They find into a cramped cavern filled with crates and debris. Someone sneezes. The tunnel behind quakes and then caves in. Your team is trapped. No! 
Tactics would have been our nice option here, but we haven't got that luxury. In fact, the only one we've got a decent chance of is Green Diplomacy. Consult the Moon Man. Cheryl Platz turns to the enigmatic Moon Man, and, Moon Man and shrugs. The entire crew awaits his response with bated breath. So we get one success for her diplomacy skill and one for each crew member. If we hit a crew member like this, we succeed, but a crew member dies. If we hit a critical success, obviously we succeed. Failure is failure and bad shit happens and critical failure is very bad, very bad indeed. Um, obviously the problem with losing crew members is when we come to the next one now, we'll only have this many successes. We won't have the crew member that died. Um, so that is an issue. So you've got to sort of balance your stats versus your crew. Uh, if we'd gone in with two tactics, we would have had three of these critical successes and we would have, you know, this one would have been a crew member success as well. Uh, so you're essentially sacrificing crew to succeed throughout this and then coming out with hopefully a nice fat reward. The Moon Man whips out a pickaxe and starts a dig. Cheryl Platts and the team follow close behind through twists and turns in the dark. You lose Xander Carteria somewhere along the way, but you find some mushrooms plus five food. Not the best, but could have been worse, I guess. Cheryl Platts leads the away team into an ancient and dusty crypt. A stone casket stands ominously in the center of the crypt, undisturbed. The Moon Man gazes at it, still holding his stiff smile. How should the team proceed? We're going to pop it open. Pop open that ominous casket. Your wish is Shell Platz's command. As soon the rest of the team is working together to lift the lid from the grim casket, the Moon Man looks on. To the team's horror, a tangled mess of old bones leaves itself out of the casket. The bone thing's four skulls stare at your team as it reaches into the casket to retrieve a sword and shield. Shell Platz needs an order. Again, we haven't got tactics as an option. Let's go with... Let's go with the Moon Man again. Cheryl Platz frantically turns to the Moon Man, who hunches heroically between your team and the Fiend. The Moon Man's rigid smile remains resolute as he prepares to act. Fingers crossed. Here goes. We need some success. No, we failed. Bad times. The Moon Man brandishes a crossbow and starts firing at the nightmare. The bolts pass harmlessly between its bones. The Fiend strikes down Street Lamp Moose before Cheryl Platz snaps out of it and just blasts the thing. Shit, we also lost Alex Ferran. The intrepid team has now arrived in the bowels of a dark, damp dungeon. The walls are fuzzy with moss. An enormous blob creature, bristling with mushrooms and tendrils, is sleeping soundly in a pool in the centre of the passage. Heesh. Uh, well, again, not many options to go with here, so we'll have to go science. Collect a bio sample from the creature. Right when Cheryl Platz gave you the description of that creature, you knew you had to get a sample. Sure, the team down there isn't thrilled about this, but you've got full confidence. <laughs> Fingers crossed, this is not a very good chance of success. And you'll see we've even got extra critical failures. Just as Cheryl Platz tries to scoop out a sample, the slimy sleeper's eye widens. It roars and tries to devour your officer. The crew managed to fend it off, but there's no much left of your team leader. She lost two hit points. So team leaders have hit points. You'll see they have three of them. Uh, we can regenerate them after we get off here. But chances are, if she takes any more damage down here, she's going to die. She can also die in space. So we have to be very, very careful. Cumbling Bridge. I think this is the last bit of it. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to make it out without Cheryl Platts dying. The away team follows the moonland to a ledge that looks out into a massive bottomless cavern. The only way forward is a crumbling stone bridge leading up to a platform suspended above the pit. That's got to be the treasure. Forward team. We're going to have to go with the old moon man again. It's our best chance of success. This is clearly what he's after. Maybe he knows what to do. Your team has really bonded with this creepy little scamp. They seem to trust me for more than they trust you now. Come on, let's have a crit success. Oh god, these four failures. Oh! Success! The Moon Man ruptures the ceiling with a blast of magic from his elemental staff. Magma flows into the chamber, filling the pit below. He crafts a small stone boat and paddles your team across. You were just about to suggest something like that. At last, what's left of your team has reached the uh, glowing green rock. Well, at least the Moon Man seems excited. He points at Cheryl Platz and then towards a large treasure chest. Oh, that's more like it. Open the chest, claim your reward. I don't know what happens if you let the Moon Man have the treasure, but to be honest, fuck him. 
Fuck the moon, man. We lost valuable people down here. Shilplat flips, so flips open the chest to reveal a solid brick of cubic turbonium. This hyper-condensed ship fuel should last you a long time. You mark this strange nocturnal planet with a smiley face in your ship's database. 300 fuel. So now we've got 840 fuel. We're not going to need fuel for a while. So now we can start focusing on food as our priority and other things. We gained a science for Cheryl. We gained a tactics for Cheryl. And we gained five crew. Which more than makes up what we lost. Holy shit, we had a great time. Um, also, because Cheryl just gained two stats, we really could do with healing her up. So if we find a space base, we're going to let her rest and heal those um, those wounds. Because we do not want to lose her now. Holy shit, that was hugely successful. Uh, so let's go industrial station. We'll use that to heal up Cheryl. Here we are. You receive a message from a nearby mining colony inviting you to stop to buy to to stop by to trade resources. They seem friendly enough. Let's visit. The crew disembarks the vessel and pours out into the docking port. When you land, you see a variety of alien species all hard at work. There's a this thick cloud of dust in the air. We are going to rest. Do you want to rest here and recover some health? You have to consume some supplies. We're going to do it. We're going to have to do it. Use 30 food. Time to kick back. You eat the food and begin your long session of R&R. &R. Crack open the Nutri paste. Yeah. It's worth it. We get her back up by one, um, which is going to be pretty handy. By the time your crew is finished, you've blown through at least a month's worth of rations. I mean, you all feel awesome now, but you're a little astonished at how much you ate. It's okay, we're going to focus on finding food now. Uh, when you land, you see a variety. Of, yeah, we did this. Um, let's trade. Let's trade some fuel for food. We've got loads of fuel. You wander the cramped halls of the mining colony until you come upon something resembling a general store. An, end, an elderly grobulan is manning the desk and grunts at you. Where you are? Let's have a look. The grobulan rolls his eight eyes. We are both. Seriously, what do you want? Food. We want food. The grubbin grins wickedly as long as you don't mind it tasting like dirt. Yeah, we've got food to spare. What will you trade for it? We've got fuel. The grubbin leans in. Always need fuel for the drills. How much you got? 100 fuel for 45 food. That sounds pretty good for me. to me. Let's do that. Once the deal is finalised, the grubbin spits into his hand and extends it to you. You shake it and then immediately set your phaser to sanitise. I feel like we did well there. Should we rest again? No, we're okay. Let's leave. Satisfied with the supplies you've secured, you return to the Indestructible 2. Asteroid Belt food. Hey! Double threat level, though. That's pretty bad news. Sensors indicate there's some sort of float memorial. Um, Should we... Yeah, let's go for it. Quista Bergte was just a little too hungry. It turns out the person was an author, evident from the neatly stacked piles of books. You take a copy of the Big Book of Talking Good and learn something. Plus one diplomacy for our captain. Excellent news. You're hailed by an angry Urak. You've flown into their territory without permission. According to tradition, you must now face the Urak champion in a space joust for the right to pass. As the interloper, you may choose the type of space joust. Um, we're going for food. We'll probably... Shall we do risk in hull, I guess? We don't really want to lose any crew right now. We've got plenty of hull. We've got nine hull. That's a lot. Marshmallow joust. Narwhals. Fucking narwhals. Pressure to name a mode of combat at a moment's notice. You at least try to think of one that won't cause a lot of harm to your people. If you've got to do this, marshmallow joust. Please, please. Success. Critical success. The Urax mistakenly order everyone to build their jousting poles using marshmallows. While an important team building exercise, it proves difficult. The disheartened directs let you pass and beg you to take the troublesome marshmallows with you. Wow. And we gain two diplomacy. Holy shit. That went surprisingly well. I feel like we're going to do really well on this run. <laughs> this might finally be the run where I get to the end. Believe me, I've tried so many times to get to the end before the patch. And I got to the very last square and died. And then I was like, fuck this. <laughs> Oh god, look, it's the Borg. The cube-like ship approaching is unmistakable. It's the dreaded analog collective. They demand you assimilate into their ancient mainframe, replacing any advanced technology with their superior outdated appliances, mainly toasters. Upgrade them instead. We've got eight science. Let's do it. The analog collective has lived in the haze of retro appliances for so long you almost feel sorry for them. You covertly install a galaxy net connection in their ship. Certainly this will help them realise the error of their Luddite ways. We can barely fail at this. Yes. Excellent. 
The analog cube falls silent. You wait with bated breath. It, finally, they hail you. Have you seen this hollow of a warp weasel sneezing? It's adorable. You have, but you watch it again anyway. It is adorable. Technology wins again. Plus one bravado. Oh, this is going too good. Too good now. Let's go food. Let's go food. It's right there. We need it. Let's go get it. You can't take it anymore. You, you divert resources from your science team to turn off the annoying indicator light that's been flashing on your dashboard for the last light year. Okay, that has cost us the science. Never mind. Never mind. We've still got plenty of science. A criminal field for his confectionery genius as much as his evil... That's not how you spell confectionery. A screenshot that. <laughs> a criminal feared for his confectionery genius as much as he's evil, the underbaker plans to use his quantum oven to unbake all pies, making him the galaxy's sole supplier. He demands your fuel for his plan. If you refuse, he threatens to bake you. Well, we will find a way to counter unbaking because science is our strong point. This unbaking thing sounds pretty serious, but there has to be a way to counter its effects. You set your science team on researching if there is any way to un unbake that as that which has been unbaked. My God, it's fiendish. If we fail this, oh no, plus success. Oh, thank God. Of course, if you bake something twice, getting unbaked just reverts it to a normal amount of baked. Ah! Quickly, you contact all the pastry chefs, telling them they need to burn their creations from now on. They are confused but grateful. Plus thirty food. Excellent. Dwarf Star or Asteroid Belt? Let's go for the Dwarf Star. I think we'd rather get some crew than some hull right now. So we'll go for this one. Sensors indicate for memorial. Let's skip this memorial. Let's not bother. I feel like we're getting sidetracked and it could be a bad one. We've, we've been lucky twice. I don't want to risk another one. Eldred the Mix Masochist. Cyborg DJ Eldred is dropping cosmic beats in a nearby sector. The show is likely patched with wayward youths, the perfect place for Galaxy Force recruitment. You know what Eldred? You know that Eldred has a reputation for villainous behaviour. Watch the plan. Uh, well, our best best chance of success is Operation Recruitment Bake Sale. <laughs> I like it. Let's fucking do it. This looks like a job for your famous Nutri-Paste fritters. You whip up a big batch and grab a clipboard. Everybody loves fried food and a good cause. You set up shop in the back of the warehouse where the show is going on and wait, smiling. This succeeds. It's going to be a fucking miracle. Also, that fucking rabbit. Oh my god. Oh, we failed some. A squat little alien is choking on one of your fritters. The music stops as Eldred cries out, Smitty, no! You perform the Galaxy Force anti-choking manoeuvre and save his little life, but you leave with nothing more than a thank you. Minus 45 food. Okay, not the best, but never mind. Let's, let's not go to the double threat. Let's go for the easier threat. Sensors indicate that there is some sort of floating... Oh, fuck off. No, we're not going this. We're not going to any more memorials. I think we've done enough memorials. The Admiral hails you, but it's an unusual call. He's not at his desk. There's a weird echo and you hear strange noises. Then you hear a toilet flush. The Admiral is hailing you from the bathroom. This is going to be awkward. Uh, what are our options? Well, anything goes. Jesus Christ. Uh, Diplomacy is five. Amazingly, we're doing pretty good on Diplomacy. So I guess we can go for Eva. Uh, call him out, ask him not to stand up, hang up, laugh it off, forget it. Let's hang up, laugh it off, forget it. Big deal. He called us on the toilet, not the end of the world. You decide the best cause is to feign a comm malfunction and you cut the feed. You chuckle to the bridge crew about the Admiral hailing you from the bathroom. In before we didn't cut it. <laughs> oh, we succeeded, thank God. Oh yeah, last the navigation chief. He just does that sometimes. Gross, right? Everyone just chuckles and moves on. Plus one diplomacy. Nice. Success. Uh, we're going to go down here because it's less of a threat. Let's go here. If that's a memorial, fuck my life. We're not going to the no more memorials. Your manufactured robot, MK421, has constructed an exact copy of herself. She informs you that she has lots of ideas and wants to make more friends. This makes you a little uneasy. Her green eyes blink at you, awaiting your orders. Uh, well, we might as well go science. It's probably our best one. Risking crew for crew. But why not? We'll go for it. Grateful, I shall relocate to the laboratory. Your chief scientist isn't too sure about this, but you don't care. You want to see what this robot can do. 
She's going to make loads of little robots for us to pad out our crew that we lost. Oh my god, that was scary. MK421 is ready to present the fruits of her labour. Optimistic, I present to you a squad of non-violent holographic crew members. They are projected by small mobile rovers that scuttle across the floor. I call them Hoombas. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the puns are real. Oh my god, but we gained four crews, so I'll let them off. Trading station, we don't really need to visit. Uh, we don't need to you know, trade anything for anything. We've got a pretty good spread of ships, so we'll go here. <laughs> The Indestructible 2 is forced to pull over and an imposing space cop appears on your view screen. Oh no, it's the Popo! Sergeant Desmond Popo to be exact, he says, smiling politely and tipping his hat. Now, the reason I pulled you over... Bravado 3. It's not great, is it? Do we want to risk losing crew? Or do we want to risk random? I feel like I'd rather risk crew, we've got plenty of them. Let's floor it. You haven't done anything wrong, damn it. You're afraid for no rational reason. You instruct your navigation officer to scram. Maximum warp. See ya, Popo. It's 50-50. We'll go with it. Oh! <laughs> when the space police finally catch up with you, they aren't angry. They're amazed at the speed and dexterity with which you escape them. They request a consult about propulsion and thermodynamics. They pay well in fuel. 250 fuel to be exact. And another diplomacy point. Holy shit! I think I think we're on to a winner. How far away are we? No, not too far actually. We're gonna get there pretty soon. And the next star is a food one, which is good because food is probably the thing we're lowest on at the moment. Oh, you know what these bastards are, don't you? A group of adorable furry aliens want to trade you food and fuel for your broken computer parts. What a deal! You invite them on board. Unfortunately, your crew's allergies kick in as soon as they step out the airlock. Uh, well, we've got two options, and they're both pretty good, because now we've got seven and seven, so we can go either. They both have the same trade-offs. Guess it doesn't really matter which one. What should we go for? Let's go for green for a change. We haven't gone, we've, we've gone with yellow, like, the whole game. Let's go for a green. Um, keep the thoughts going. You're not going to stop just for some allergies. You tell the aliens those sounds are how humans show respect. The green stuff leaking out of their noses, also respect. Smooth. You try to block out the sound of your crew's misery. Nice. <laughs> Ultimate diplomacy skills. Yeah, success. Sure, some of your crew collapse in a gurgling pile of yellow-green mucus, but you manage to smooth things over. For some reason, the food they send over is covered in fur too, but it, fry it fries up just fine after sterilization. Excellent work. There's only one place we can go, so I guess we're going there. Let's carry on. Oh my god, I fucking love this game. I really like this. <laughs> TFS 9000. You're so excited. The last time you were at Omega Mart, you invested in a state-of-the-art efficiency management machine, the TFS 9000 Efficionator. After months of waiting, it's finally here. You can't wait to try all of its functions. Well, yellow is our best option, so let's look under the hood. Also, fuel is our easiest thing to risk, so sweet. You're really curious about how this spectacular machine works. You and your science team decide to take up the casing and look at the circuitry to learn what you can. <laughs> It's obviously the HAL 9000. Oh, bollocks, man. Oh, shit. We failed. Hey, Prince of the TFS 9000. How would you like it if someone took off your pants in front of the whole science team? Not cool, guys. The TFS shuts itself down in embarrassment and you're forced to fly back to Omega Mart for product support. Minus 200 fuel. Thank God we've got plenty of fuel to risk. Minus one tactics. Minus one diplomacy. That was a, that was a critical failure. That hurt. That really hurt. Class X star. Let's go there. Luckily, we think we've still got enough fuel to get to the end, so we're okay. The Roboterator, the AI moderator on Galaxy Force's chat channel on GalaxyNet, has become aggressive. It's also infiltrated your ship's computer, interrupting conversations all over the ship with comments about propriety. Pro propri propriety. Propriety, guys. Propriety. This must stop. Delete the Roboterator or cyber attack the Roboterator. Let's cyber attack him. I mean, chances are we're not going to win. I'd rather lose guaranteed crew than risk losing food on a random, and we don't really need the extra hull. So let's cyber attack him. The only way to do, the only way to do take this, the only way to fucking these are all getting sent to the devs so they can fix them. Don't worry about it. The only way to do take this roboterator down is by cyber attack. You assemble your engineers and grab your programming for idiots book. 
We're gonna fucking need it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> you do manage to take down the Roboterator and Galaxynet and the whole Galaxy Force mainframe. Everyone on the ship panics without the computers and stampedes to the cafeteria, trampling several crew. Six crew. Oh shit. Okay. It's okay, guys. It's okay. We're close and we can make it. I've been in far worse situations than this. It seems that your trusted fuel czar forgot to screw the cap back on after your last fill up. You've lost quite a bit of fuel due to her negligence. Minus 50. Oh, it's all starting to go wrong rapidly. Internal sensors detect an alien presence has suddenly appeared aboard your ship. The alien has given no indication of its intentions. Oh, cute little alien. Well, science is probably our best and Hull is something we can definitely afford to risk. Let's learn as much as possible about the alien. You have the science team run several ship-wide scans for the alien entity. Here we go. We can't possibly get another failure. Yeah, excellent. Following the scans, your team corners the alien. It detonates itself, escaping via the resulting hole in the hull. The tech team reverse engineers the effect into a bravely running away propulsion system for your ship. Wow. Excellent, Monty Python. Uh, 50 fuel, lost one hull. That's really not a big loss at all. And gained a tactics. Pretty good, actually. That was well done. We are so fucking close right now. I feel like going straight to this one is a pointless exercise. So, and we don't need fuel. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. Let's just go for this one. Okay, what have we got? Not him again. You've been boarded. Oh, great. It's the inebri inebriated galactic mooch, the Kapalka. Hey, Captain. Let's get, hick, let's get this party starting. I'm super hungry. What's for dinner? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's go to Kepler Burger and let's examine his blobby body. Let's risk the whole for science. You've got a hunch that his shimmering gelatinous body could be useful. As a bonus, you could sedate him in the lab to shut him up. What could go wrong? Yes, indeed. What could go wrong? <laughs> Take off your shell, it says on his shirt. Oh, my God. We passed anyway, so that's good. After a long struggle, the Kapalka is zonked out on a table in the lab. Your science team extracts pure ship fuel from its quivering form. Soon a cloud of gas is all that's left. Pew, it stinks. Plus 100 fuel. Excellent. Let's carry on. Whoa, we are so close. We are so fucking close. I have died here before. I'm not going to the fucking memorial. Bollocks to that. We're so close. We can actually do this. You're awakened with a start. You've been gagged and tied to a chair. The room is dark and you struggle to see anything. Suddenly, several of your crew burst in through the door and their eyes lock expectantly, expectantly with yours. Uh, well, science is the best option and we've got plenty of fuel to spare. So, mm, is what we're going to say. Your medical team rushes into the room and operates with swift efficiency to release you. Holy shit. Quite a big failure chance on this one. Oh, but we passed, thank God. It's not always the same size, in case you were wondering. The dire circumstances of your self-inflicted isolation saved days of having to eat. Unfortunately, your crew has no idea where to go in the interim and decide to see how fast the ship can go. You're not sure if that was worth it. The fuck happened? That was such a weird one. <laughs> The last star. Oh my god, we're going to make it. Security detects something just beamed to the bridge. Have you heard the good news? That's the voice coming from a small green lizard. You can save 15% or more on spaceship insurance. Well, anything we do is a success at this point. We're not going to lose. Um, let's let's risk the hole for a random bonus. Security breach. Security breach. Red alert. Tactics 4. You're not sure how this little guy made it through your security filters, but it suggests some problems. Take the lizard into custody and do a full sweep of the ship. Success. Come on, success. Oh, no. Plus Y. You are hailed by an enemy ship who demands the return of their lizard. <laughs> when you refuse, citing a violation of space protocols, the ship fires. You beam the lizard back and set about restoring your hull and beefing up your security procedures. Lost three hull. It's okay. We've got plenty. The goal is right fucking here. Oh my god, we have made it. Mission successful. Finally passed it through the third galaxy. Excellent. Congratulations, Annabelle Ake. You have successfully traversed Space Montezuma's Revenge in a most daring expedition. Galaxy Force honours sorry, Galaxy Force honours with you. 
honours you with the title, send them that as well. Admirable scientist, because we use science most more than anything, so we get a rank. Uh, here are our stats. We did 24 space encounters. We did one away mission, 14 events, two graves visited. Uh, orders issued, we chose the red option four times, tactics twice, diplomacy six, science 11, bravado twice. We got two critical failures, four failures, 14 successes, one clue success, and four critical successes. And over here you can see the crew that we lost. Luckily we didn't lose any officers, but we did lose some crew. Let's have a moment of silence for our crew that we lost. So starting from, is this going to roll over? We'll give it a sec to roll over. Starting from the top, if I can read them quick enough. Baldrick ended on a bad note. This guy, Lizard, Lizard, died of natural causes, apparently. Vaporized, vaporized, got beaned, beaned, that was the jelly bean thing. Missed roll call, missed roll call, crushed by a tunnel, burned by the Skelly King twice. Space mucus, so sloopy, so green. The Roboterator killed quite a few of them, holy shit. And that was all of them. Wow, it goes too quick for me to read them all out, but never mind. You can just slow it down and watch it yourselves if you really give a shit. I'm sure you don't. Um, continue. That's it. I'll take me back to the galaxy screen. There's our medal, and we've opened the next galaxy. I'm not going there on cam, guys. Uh, that was it. That was the end. I'm going to play this in my own time, uh, and hopefully they might even add some more galaxies. That would be pretty good. I enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, go buy the game. It's pretty cheap, actually. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, but for now, guys, I'm going to leave it here, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.